Yeah, hi, guys. Just a general question to the both of you. Uh, you know, it's your first hockey game in 140 days. Uh, how do you both feel physically, and uh, how do you think it went? Uh, I thought it went pretty well. I think uh, we started pretty well. We got away from it a little bit in the second period at the end, but uh, just getting out there and playing a, a game against a different team in your jersey is kind of nice, and uh, just kind of getting back into the flow of things and seeing what the rink's going to be like and just kind of getting that experience out of the way. Yeah, just to what, kind of echo what Jacob said, uh, especially playing a team like the Islanders, it's very structurally sound, very veteran. Uh, just being able to, to kind of get your timing back, get your legs back under you, uh, get used to playing without that time and space. I mean, you can only get so much from, from, from inner squad scrimmages. So uh, I think there's a lot of stuff we can take away from today's game going into uh, first game against the Kings. Hey guys, so a couple of quick questions. Chris, first game back after your injury and, and the long layoff, how did the uh, leg hold up? And, and Jacob, uh, as far as playing against the Islanders, they take away so much time and space. Did you think that the transition game from D zone to the offensive zone was slowed because of just the, the rust against an opponent, or did they take away a lot of the outlet passes tonight? Good. Foot felt great. Go ahead, Jake. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's predicated on our, our skating. I think uh, when we built some speed in the first, I uh, thought we got through the neutral zone pretty well. And then when uh, the D, D stopped skating a little bit and we get a little bit of that gap in between our D and our forwards, um, our whole game tends to slow down a bit. So that's uh, something to recognize. I think some, something that we did incredibly well, especially towards the end of the season, was uh, when we talked about playing fast and uh, kind of tilting the ice. Um, being able to, to transition quickly in the neutral zone when the puck gets flipped out. I mean, that's a team that does such a good job of, of just advancing zones and getting the puck out. Um, I mean, that's, that's going to be really important for us going forward to get our timing back where, where the forwards are sprinting out and supporting our D and uh, we get, getting back going north. Um, I mean, those, those are the times when we're able to generate chances. Those are the times when we're able to go back at D who have maybe a tough gap. And um, so that's something we definitely have to, to work on going forward. That's why he won the New York Media Award this year. Answers like that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Chris, I guess I'll ask the media award winner. Um, you kind of hinted at it before, just the idea of the Islanders and the type of opponent they are. If you could pick an opponent to play before you have to play Carolina, would the Islanders kind of be that perfect opponent to prepare you for a five-game series against the next team? Uh, I think so. Uh, I mean, very disciplined, very defensively sound. Um, they, they don't really give you an inch. Um, and that's what playoff hockey is. And I know a lot of our guys haven't played played that brand of hockey yet. I haven't haven't played in the playoffs, but it's it's a war of attrition. Uh, we're going to have to get to the point where we're comfortable advancing pucks, um, where we're comfortable with that you know bend don't break mentality because uh, the ice gets the ice gets chipped up, um, and and you know guys that might not necessarily throw the body are throwing the body, and there's there's no time and space. So um, that's what the hockey is going to be like going forward. So uh, we got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. I guess. Hey guys, uh, for Chris, you guys didn't get the goal to the end, obviously, but I, I'm curious if you were happy with the looks you guys were generating. And, and then for Jacob, you guys got a lot of time on the PK tonight. So, so what, what would you take away from that? Um, for me, I, I mean, obviously Gord's, uh, Gord's here now and Lindy moved on. So that's uh, a little bit of different voice. Uh, PK is something we went over a lot, I guess, in the last week or so. A um, little bit of a different uh, feel. Uh, I think it was nice to get some practice in on it today because I mean there's a couple, couple changes I guess with just a different, uh, different voice leading uh, leading the way there. So it was nice to get some uh, some PK time. What was it like playing in uh, you know an, an empty arena with with no fan noise? I know that that was uh, something that you guys had spoken about, uh, you know, not being able to generate. Uh, you know, any kind of enthusiasm from from the crowd noise. How was that uh, that experience today? Uh, I thought when you're on the ice playing, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a whole lot different. I think on the benches when you notice it most, I mean, you can hear everything that's said. Uh, there's just not like that that extra buzz. But when you're on the ice, it's kind of the, the same game. Um, there's a little bit of a difference, but it, for me, the biggest biggest difference is when you're sitting on the bench and there's just not a whole lot going on in between whistles or, I guess, uh, TV timeouts. Like, you're just kind of sitting there in silence at times. So uh, it'll be important to, to keep talking, keep energy up as a team, stay positive, and 
I mean, your, your team is really the only, only energy you got in the building, so you got to stick together pretty well in this situation. It's well, definitely, definitely easier to communicate with the teammates on the ice and on the bench. Uh, I mean, there's some, some times during the playoffs in certain buildings where you, you can barely hear yourself think, so that'll be different. Yeah, I, I'm just curious now with, uh, you know, you get one, one uh, preseason exhibition warm-up game or whatever it is to work out all the kinks you have to work out. Um, and your next game is Saturday. Uh, whatever you didn't like out of tonight's game, do you have enough time to fix it in time for Saturday? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, 100%. Um, I mean, there's going to be stuff you don't like in every single game, and there's going to be stuff that you can take away from it regardless of what point in the season or playoffs you're playing and that you can hang your hat on and say we, say we did a good job. Um, but for having such a big layoff, um, going into a very kind of strange situation, strange environment, playing an exhibition game a few days before a playoff game, um, I, I thought the boys competed hard and did well and, 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 and tried to stick to the structure as well as we could have. And um, I mean, you just, just want to cut your teeth a little bit going into, going into that first game of the series. So, um, I mean, at the end of the day, Losing this one isn't the worst thing in the world because we're a bunch of very competitive athletes and in the big scheme of things, this one really does not matter. And uh, I can tell you that guys are a little, a little pissed off and a little angry right now after that one. I never like losing the Islanders. So, um, you know, having a bit of a chip on our shoulder going into the, going into the first, first playoff round is not a bad thing.